Welcome back everyone to the Wraith special project. We're going to get straight into building and I'm going to move quite quickly and there's a lot to cover. So the first thing that I'm doing is removing the outer panels of the case. And I think this is one of the most important features due to the compact size of the case because it allows you to get your hands in from all sides at any point in the build. You still need to really think about the order that you're going to install the components in. But I've built into this case about seven times now, many of those prototype builds and I find this is about as easy to build into as, you know, a big full tower case. I'm just temporarily installing the PSU and you can see that it has stainless steel standoffs because of the internal power supply cable that needs to be lifted up off the bottom panel of the case. And I'm just doing this now so that I can measure out for the custom cables so that somebody can begin work on those because they're quite time consuming. Wraith doesn't actually need to have custom cables. It doesn't have the integrated cable management of Spectre. And there's a big reason for that that I'm going to talk about later on in this build log that we actually went with the shroud. So I've now installed the motherboard and also the SSD on the bottom panel because I've actually blocked the 12 SSD mounts that are normally on the SSD mounting panel with the ISO grid mod that we've installed. And I'm now installing the Proteum pump. And you can see the Proteum pump cover, we've actually swapped it out for a silver one in this build. Normally it comes with a black with silver rings pump cover. But this is actually a three piece pump cover. The retention ring comes off the sleeve part. And that's what you do when you're installing like the Aqua Computer D5 Next. And you also don't use the back cover if you're using that pump. So it makes it compatible with you know, pretty much any D5 pump that's out there. And I'm just putting the cable off to the right. And something you always need to remember, if you're going to bend a cable that has heat shrink, you need to heat the heat shrink before you bend it. Because if you just try to force the bend, it's just going to bend the wires, you know, very sharply and possibly damage the wires. And I'm now installing the GPU. And I really could install the back panel before I do this, but you know it's not very well reinforced when you just install it in the slot on its own, so you really need to be careful that you don't move the case around if you're not going to install the back panel at this point. But the next thing I'm going to do is start installing the loop, and this is going to help to hold the GPU in position. And there is another reason that I'm leaving the back panel off. It's just so that I can get more access for building the loop. But it's really up to you how you do this. You know, you could be doing this part of it with the back panel on, the front panel on. Maybe you want to install the all of the panels at this point and the radiators, but I don't know. I just like to leave as many panels off for as long as I can, even though you may not need that, that full access. But I find that it's usually around the 10th time that I build into a case that I really get to know it and develop a process for it. And that's usually when my ideas for at least an unmodified version of that case kind of come to their you know, fullest development, like as far as I can go, because I've really done everything with it that I can do without modifying it. And that's just, you know, from the experience that I've had, there are many cases that I've built into like more than 10 times, like all of the Case Labs cases, certainly Spectre. But this one, I'm definitely still tweaking my process and, and learning more about it. There's just so many possibilities. So I am installing the rear panel now, as you can see. And this would have actually been a lot easier if this motherboard wasn't so old and didn't have the integrated I.O. cover. And what I'm doing now is aligning the GPU. Wraith has tolerances built in. This is something that we have to do because we're doing billet CNC cases. They're really stiff and strong. And normally, you know, with the pressed steel cases, they're only 0.6 of a millimeter thick or something. So there's all this flex in the case and PCB components don't have very good tolerances, but it's normally not such a problem. But when you have, you know, the strength of our cases, if a PCB component is slightly off anywhere, then, and things don't line up, well, the case is not going to flex at all. So we actually have to build tolerances into our cases to allow for bad tolerances of all of the manufacturer's components. And so if you find anything is misaligned, it's best just to undo every panel that is related to that component, 
line everything up and then tighten everything back up again because there's about a half a millimeter tolerance kind of built into all of the panels and pieces of Wraith or at least as many as we could. So you can see how I'm installing the radiators. I'm installing the panels onto the radiators and then just installing the ent entire assembly into the case. And you leave these panels unbolted so that you can get the fittings in and the tubes in for connection to the manifold. Either that or you can just leave the radiator unbolted, like just put two bolts in diagonally to hold the radiator there temporarily. And then just undo one of the bolts, the one that's on the side where the fittings and the tube is, and then you can swing the radiator out, get those fittings connected up and the tube connected up and, and push the radiator in onto the, the fittings and the tube. So I'm now just installing the drainage system. And this is probably the tightest tube that I did. I think I could probably come up with a better order to actually install the components and the tubes in to avoid this tight situation here. Like maybe I could have done this one before I installed the GPU and the PSU. Like I said, I'm still kind of learning about the case and I'll develop my process as I go. So we're already filling the loop. We definitely do the quickest build logs when we build into our own cases. I mean, if you look back at the very detailed build logs up to, I think eight parts was the most I ever did. Actually, no, 14 on one of my own personal systems a long time ago into a Case Labs TH10, if I remember rightly. But that's because, you know, our products need to speak for themselves. And I also plan on doing more Wraith builds coming up, of course, and so we can cover things over time. I am using Mayhem's Aurora. I would never use this in a customer system unless they really push me to because this is only for show systems for short-term use. It does not last very long. This being my own build, I can flush it out and clean it whenever I want to if there is a problem. And of course, it really fits the theme. The Wraith loop is the easiest loop to fill that I have ever filled. And that's just due to the layout the reservoir design and volume, just the way that it worked out, the inlet coming back in quite low down means the air goes up very quickly, the air comes out fast. The loop volume is quite large. For this build it was about 900 mils and for the normal Spectre builds it's about 11 to 1400, so it's almost up there with Spectre. But you can see that you know within minutes the air was out only three times filling the reservoir before full circulation. So yeah, it's definitely an easy loop to fill. Check for the links in the video description if you'd like to download these wallpapers. We're also going to make more of the finished build. We're doing a quick giveaway on this video. All you have to do is comment and it has to be related to this topic, computers, liquid cooling. We're giving away a Core and Ethereal Dual Silver version 1.0 and it's an international giveaway. 